Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool PowerShell module every Monday. This Monday, we're looking at Import Excel. Import Excel is a PowerShell module to import and export Excel spreadsheets without, uh, without Excel. So I think this module could be called uh, Excel++ because it does a lot more than importing and exporting Excel spreadsheets. So I've heard a lot about Import Excel before. Uh, as you can see by the stars on GitHub, it's a very popular module. But I kind of went through a bunch of their examples and started playing with it just to see what it could do. So I'm going to show off some of the examples from their GitHub repo, and there's a bunch more that you can actually check out. They have a, an extremely extensive example folder here up on GitHub. So um, you can just do install module, import Excel, and then you can um, start playing with it right away. So one of their uh, big things is that it, you don't need Excel to actually use this, so I wanted to test that out. So what I did is I spun up my um, Ubuntu WSL container here, and I'm running Ubuntu 1804. I installed the import Excel um, PowerShell module, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually, uh, I grabbed their, uh, one of their chart um, examples. So as you can see here, I'm calling new Excel chart definition. Um, I'm using some of this data inside this uh, here string here to populate pretty much an Excel spreadsheet um, and then creating these three charts. So if I run that in Ubuntu, you can see that it ran right away. It was real quick. Um, gave a, one warning about auto-fitting not working on this OS configuration, but if I uh, do an ls, you can see that I have this import Excel example.xlsx um, file that was created without Excel. So there's definitely Excel not installed um, inside my WSL container. So really cool. Um, but let's look, actually look at some examples of some of the output on a machine where I do have Excel installed and we can kind of um, pop in and out of Excel and PowerShell to see some of these commands that you can run. So uh, like in our previous example, uh, it was creating a chart. So let's actually look at how to create a chart based on some of the processes here. So uh, at the top here, um, we're going to create this import Excel example.xlsx file. So uh, it removes it at the beginning. Um, and then it calls this invoke some function, um, gets the processes. And then um, the dimensions are the company. And then it's going to measure the the handles, um, the memory, and um, is PM is process memory maybe, and virtual memory size. Um, and then from there, it's going to create this chart based on um, that invokes some result. So then we use new Excel chart definition, store that in the C variable, and then as you can see, it's taking that data that we got from invoke sum piping it to export Excel, uh, Excel and then um, storing it in that Excel source file, um, creating that chart, and then um, calling the show um, parameter on export Excel so that it pops open Excel after it's created the uh, XLSX file. So if you run that, it's going to get my process memory and it, uh, open Excel. So on the left hand side here, you can see that I have some, oh, because uh, these are uh, company names. I was like, wow, what's a fresh out media? I, don't, I still don't know what that is, but um, so there's a bunch of different company names and then um, some information about the processes. And then on the right hand side here, you can see it created that chart um, using a new chart definition. So that's super cool. Um, let's look at, um, another one of these. So in addition to creating things like charts, you can also do things like uh, formatting the cells in your Excel documents. So again, we're going to call get process uh, and we're going to select uh, pretty much the same properties as we selected in our previous example. Um, from there, we're going to call uh, export Excel. Uh, we're going to store it in that temp uh, Excel SX file. We're going to show it. We're going to call auto size, auto size the columns. And then you can see here that we have this script block to actually um, set the cell style of the um, cells that we're setting inside our um, um, Excel document. So um, set cell style will allow us to do that. And based on um, some information that's coming in from uh, the cell style script block, uh, we can then set the cell styles of all the cells inside our um, document. 
So we will run this. Uh, if I recall, last time this took a, a couple seconds to run um, to actually get all the processes, um, select them, and then format all the cells for um, this machine here. So now it's completed that, and you can see it's opened up my uh, Excel document here. Uh, auto size kicked in, so our, our column names are the correct width, and um, you can see that our cells are now styled. So the top one is cyan, and then we have some various gray colors um, underneath the uh, cyan header. All right, so uh, one really cool one that I uh, ran into is the import XML command or import HTML commandlet. So what this will actually do is it calls invoke web request and it actually will go out to a particular web page and then you can specify the index of the table that you want to turn into an Excel document. So for example, if we pop out to this uh, demographics of India um, website, you can see there's a bunch of tables. Like actually on the right hand side here, all these demographics of India are um, in tables. And then we have this uh, history of India here, kind of like the population history and that kind of thing um, in this table here. But what you can actually do is you can use this import HTML commandlet to go out to a uh, website. And then you can use the index um, parameter here to specify which table that you want to actually turn into an uh, Excel document. So. In this case, we're going to go out there. Um, index one is this table right here. So if I run this, it's going to invoke web request. It's going to use the parsed uh, HTML and then turn that table directly into an Excel document. Um, that's rad. That's super cool that it's able to like do that. It's a very uh, ingenious uh, commandlet. Um, one thing to note is I couldn't get this to work on PowerShell 7. So right now I'm running in PowerShell uh, 5.1. Um, for these examples, but uh, this is the only command that I couldn't actually get to work uh, in PowerShell 7. So maybe there's just something I'm missing there, but I was getting some errors about the parse HTML being null and that kind of thing. Um, I I want because I know parse HTML uses uh, Internet Explorer um, at least in Windows PowerShell. Uh, maybe it just doesn't work in PowerShell 7. It could just be uh, something I don't understand about that. All right, um, another cool uh, kind of feature of um, import Excel is that uh, it can join multiple workbooks together or uh, Excel documents together. So um, in this case, uh, we actually have three worksheets that we're creating. So it's a single um, Excel document, but it's actually three different worksheets. We have Oxford um, and Abandon and Banbury. And then what it's going to do is it's actually going to create um, a single worksheet based on uh, these other worksheets that we're storing inside this XML document or Excel document. So it's going to take uh, this text, convert to a CSV or from a CSV, and then export Excel for the three different um, worksheets. And then at the end here, it's going to actually call join worksheet to uh, join those worksheets together. So let's run that. And what you're going to see here is we have uh, the individual worksheets that were actually created um, in the beginning there using uh, the export Excel file or uh, commandlet, and then the name here, and then uh, we have that total that was actually created um, using uh, join worksheet. So that's pretty cool. It got uh, the data from the individual places, and you can see that uh, based on the worksheet, it actually put in the store uh, for that information. So that's really cool if you're processing a lot of different um, Excel documents and you kind of want to do this automatically with PowerShell, this is a great way to do it. All right. Uh, this one I thought was pretty cool. So uh, this is a mortgage calculator uh, built using uh, import Excel. And um, it has some parameters, so some like default values that you can actually put into your Excel document. And then it has this function where we're calling new cell data. And what that does is it calls a function that's part of import Excel called cell set Excel range. And you can set a bunch of different parameters for the, the specified range of um, cells inside your document. So um, some of these include the worksheet, the actual range that you want to um, affect. And then in this case, we're using the number format and then passing in a format. And 
you can see here that we call this uh, custom function here for uh, various cells and then um, we're going to specify a value and then potentially a format for those particular cells. So we selected sheet one which is just the uh, default sheet for the year Excel document and as you can see we can even put in things like uh, formulas so um, as you s as you can see after I run this um, we actually have this uh, loan calculator that actually uh, used the those default values so if we actually look at these cells you can see here's my formula and it's actually calculating that based on the values I put in here so for example oh let me undo that uh, for example like okay I can't afford a four hundred thousand dollar house so we're actually gonna go with a three hundred thousand dollar oh not a three million dollar house definitely not that um, and you can see the mortgage payment actually uh, changed and 6.5% uh, definitely not the case right now so you probably could do more like 3% on a 30 year and uh, you might be able to get a better rate at a 15 year so you can see that it's actually adjusting the um, monthly payment um, based on the values that I actually change inside these cells here alright so we'll close these Excel documents and uh, let's take a look at uh, moving uh, worksheets around so uh, you can actually use the export Excel um, commandlet to uh, move worksheets within the um, the XLSX file itself. So uh, in this case, we've created this first, and then we're going to create a second worksheet, and then we're going to move it to the start, so it'll be before um, first. And then we're going to create a third worksheet, but we're going to move that before first. And then um, finally, we're going to create a fourth worksheet and move it after third. So if we run that, what you'll see is on the bottom here, we have second, third, fourth, first. So just based on um, pretty much the uh, values that you specify for export Excel, uh, you can see it has adjusted the, um, the Excel uh, sheet based on that. So pretty cool. All right, and finally, I kind of wanted to show this because I thought it was really neat. Um, this is like, it feels like inception a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to create um, an, an Excel sheet that has some data, and then we're actually going to create a VBA script that, or macro that runs within Excel. So uh, you can see you have to do a little bit of uh, interesting things that might not be totally apparent unless you looked at this example is you know you create your um, Excel sheet and you sort in a variable uh, you grab your workbook and then your worksheet and then you have to create a VBA project with this create VBA project um, method from there you can actually define VBA functions so um, I haven't done VBA in a very long time but uh, this is going to output a string of hello world and this is going to sum a range um, inside our document. Um, from there uh, you can actually add this PS uh, Excel module to the modules uh, array it looks like um, and then we specify the code for our module. And then finally uh, we set the Excel range which again like sets the um, pretty much the content of those cells um, to call the formulas which are our VBA macros. So let's actually run that. It's going to pop open Excel and we get a little security warning here that macros have been disabled and you can see that I have this like uh, these couple cells here that um, have the macros in them. So let's actually enable that content and now you can see that I get hello world and you can see that uh, we have this do sum which actually is summing these values here. So um, I was uh, extremely surprised by the amount of functionality that is actually in uh, import Excel. Um, I realized I just scratched the surface here. Like again, I said that um, there are a lot of examples and a lot of functionality that I realized that I am not touching here. So I would definitely go out and uh, check out import Excel if you're using Excel at all. Um, to either generate Excel documents or uh, manipulate existing Excel documents that you may have. So uh, in this video, we looked at Import Excel. Um, it's a really cool PowerShell module for working with Excel, even if you don't have it installed. Um, and if you like more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel for more Module Mondays.